Welcome everyone here this evening. Name the Lord on this Thanksgiving Eve. We're kind of going to tackle the question, why are you here? What's, what's the purpose of this whole thing tonight? Are you here because God's given you a lot of gifts over the last year? And he's sitting up there hoping and praying that you're going to come here tonight and say thank you. And if you don't, it's going to hurt his feelings. So are you here for his benefit or are you here for your benefit? And that's what we're going to talk about here tonight in the sermon as we unpack this whole thing of thanksgiving and what its purpose is. So we'll begin our worship then here this evening as we begin here with our opening hymn, 895, Now Thank We All Our God.
I, I a poor sinner, plead guilty, guilty before, before God, God of all sins. I have lived as if God did not matter, and as if I had mattered most. My Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have altered. I have not let his love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt, and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. I am sorry for all of this, and ask for grace. I want to do better. God, be merciful to you, and strengthen your faith. Amen. Stand by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all of our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated then as we sing our hymn of praise in 806. together here the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer and then Luther's what does this mean and then what is meant here by daily bread give us this day our daily bread what does this mean God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers even to all evil people but we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? 
Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. Our Old Testament reading here on this Thanksgiving Eve is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. We'll get a chance to hear Moses give a sermon here to the people of Israel as they prepare to enter into the Promised Land. And he reminds them, just as he reminds us, that so often things will start to go pretty good for us. And what ends up happening? We forget God and all of his blessings. And we fail to remember here all that God has done for us. Because he'll close out this section in verse 18 by telling us, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you all these things. So we hear then these words from Moses' sermon. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God, by not keeping his commandments and his rules and his statutes, which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart be lifted up. And you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Beware, lest you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. You shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers, as it is this day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading here is from Philippians chapter 4. And here, St. Paul will do some commentary work on what we'll hear in a moment here in our Gospel reading from the Sermon on the Mount where our Lord is going to tell us not to be anxious. And Paul is going to help us understand what those words of Jesus that we'll hear in our Gospel reading this day mean. So we hear then these words from St. Paul. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Invite the congregation to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel then according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter in this reading, as well as the one from Deuteronomy, and the Sermon of Moses will form the basis of our sermon here this evening. And we'll pull in a little bit here as well, that last verse from our epistle reading here, which is so often quoted by Christian athletes. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And really that doesn't mean that if I have Jesus, I can go out there and throw seven touchdowns in a row. Or I can you know, go and pick up a semi-truck and walk with it if I've got Jesus. What the Greek is saying there is I can get through all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's the context of what Paul is saying. I know what it's like to have a lot. I know what it's like to have little. I know what it's like to be healthy. I know what it's like to be sick. I can get through all these things through Christ who strengthens me. And Jesus is going to explain how that works here this evening in the section on the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew's Gospel here in Matthew chapter 6. Where Jesus says this. He says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you or you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We confess our faith in with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We'll be seated then as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 813.
mercy and peace be to all of you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. If you were maybe watching football here this past weekend, you maybe saw a commercial here for Thanksgiving, and one of the things that probably drew your attention right away was the dining room table with the Thanksgiving fair on the table, and your eyes were probably drawn to two things. The beautifully carved turkey on the table and the flowers that graced the table. And on this night before Thanksgiving, what do you know? Our Lord draws our attention in our Gospel reading here tonight to the very same thing. Birds and flowers. In our Gospel reading, Jesus said this tonight. He said, look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add just one single hour to his span of life? And why do you worry about clothes? Look at how the lilies of the field grow. They don't labor or toil or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. And if this is how God clothes the flowers of the field which are here today and tomorrow are thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Holy smokes. Do you understand what Jesus just said? Our Lord just said that watching birds and flowers preaches the law more strongly than any TV Bible-thumping preacher could ever preach the law. And that's why it seems kind of strange that tomorrow most of us will stuff our faces with a bird whose life preaches against us. Let's consider that turkey that will be on your table here tomorrow. Let's, let's consider him for a moment here tonight. That majestic and fine specimen of a bird. Because after all, if you remember, it was Benjamin Franklin who wanted to make the turkey the national bird instead of the bald eagle. So let's think about that turkey here for a moment. It doesn't reap. It doesn't gather. It doesn't store anything. But yet Jesus says tonight, your Heavenly Father feeds the turkey and takes care of the turkey. And turkeys, they don't worry. They don't hoard. And turkeys don't complain. The eyes of all turkeys look to you, O oh Lord. And you give them their food at the proper time. You open up your hand and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. Jesus says tonight, that's what a turkey does. But I hate to say it, that's not what we do. Our eyes are on everything but the Lord. It's kind of interesting to think about it here. I mean, our eyes are out there looking for the next promotion, the next big deal, the next paycheck. We're checking to see if the sun's going to come out, if it's ever going to stop raining or snowing. We're wondering what Wall Street's going to do. We're wondering if Congress is ever going to stop spending like a drunken sailor. We're, we're, we're wondering if the Treasury is going to finally quit printing money so that our money doesn't become just monopoly money. We're wondering what the Board of Trade is going to do with cattle and grain prices. So before you swallow a bite of that juicy bird here tomorrow, remember that that beautifully carved bird there on your table is actually preaching to you. And if the preaching of the bird on the table isn't enough, Jesus says, check out the flowers that are there on your Thanksgiving table. Because he says, those things on the table are preaching to you as well. Jesus said, if God takes care of the flowers which are here today and tomorrow are thrown away, will he not much more care for you, O oh, you of little faith? 
You see, so often we do forget. So often, as Jesus says here tonight, we have such little faith. So often we don't, we don't listen to the warning of Moses tonight in his sermon in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And we forget that God is the one who takes care of everything. We actually forget that God owns everything. We forget that all of our blessings come from God. We forget that just like the, the turkey and the flowers that are going to be found on your Thanksgiving table here tomorrow, <coughs> we're totally dependent upon God for everything. That's why I think about this here tonight. God never celebrates Thanksgiving. He's not going to be celebrating Thanksgiving with us tomorrow. Why? Because he's got no one to thank. He possesses the deed to everything. He holds the title to the universe. He owns the whole shooting match, the whole enchilada, the whole kit and caboodle is his. Because the psalmist reminds us that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. God is the giver. And we, on the other hand, receive everything as a gift from God. That's just the facts of life. And so that's why we're here this evening. We're not here for his benefit. He's not sitting up there tonight saying, gosh, I hope those wonderful people from Calvary and Plymouth, I hope they show up here tonight and say thank you for everything. Because if they don't, they're really going to hurt my feelings. We're not here for his benefit. God has called us here tonight for our benefit. He's here so that we realize, so that we remember, so that we're reminded that everything in life comes from His gracious hand. Or as we heard in the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer, we're here to remember and realize, as Luther says in his meaning, that everything, all of our daily bread, comes from God. That's the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer. But really, it connects us to the first article of the Apostles' Creed. We're here tonight to remember what? That God gives us our bodies and souls and eyes, ears and all of our members, our reason and all of our senses. And guess what? He's the one that still takes care of them. Then, connecting us to our gospel reading today, He gives us clothing, shoes, food, drink, house, home, land, animals, our family, everything that we need to support this body and life. We're here tonight to remember that he's the one who defends us from all danger and guards and protects us from all evil. And why does God do all these things? Is it because we're such nice, wonderful, loving people? No, Luther says he does this only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. And finally, we're here tonight to remember, as Luther says in the close there of his meaning of the first article, that it is our duty to what? Thank and praise and to serve and obey Him. We're here tonight to remember that He is the giver. But more importantly, we're here tonight to also remember that He is the gift. For there on the cross, he gave us the greatest gift of all. Do you think that God who gives us everything, who gives us our daily bread, who gives us all of these incredible blessings, would just forget about you when you die? You just throw your body in a box and say, oh, it's all over, we'll just move on. No, God created your body. He takes care of that body right now. Jesus reminds us of that in the Sermon on the Mount here tonight. And on the cross, he redeemed that body. And on the last day, that body will be raised to life everlasting. See, here's the wonderful news tonight. Our Savior didn't die for the Thanksgiving turkey. And he didn't die for the flowers on the Thanksgiving table either. He died for you. He's the one who found you when you sought him not. He's the one who saved you when you wanted him not. 
He's the one who embraced you when you ran away from His loving arms. And think about it here tonight from the Sermon on the Mount. If God cares about dumb, stupid turkeys, and if He beautifully clothes the flowers of the field which are here today and gone tomorrow, don't you think that He'll take care of you and clothe you? And my dear friends of Christ, He has. He's clothed you with the garments of salvation, with the robe of His very own righteousness, the robe of our Savior's faithful life and His bloody death on the cross. That robe's covered up all of your sinfulness. And that robe now gives you access to the holy and eternal blessings of heaven. Oh yes, it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to God, as our liturgy tells us. But tonight, on this Thanksgiving Eve, we do so quite intentionally. We're here tonight to do what Moses calls us to do, to remember. To remember all that God has done for us. We're here tonight to give thanks to God that He would actually use the Thanksgiving turkey on the table and the Thanksgiving flowers on the table to call us to repentance and to teach us about faith and trust. But more importantly, we're here tonight to remember these words. The words of our Lord. The words that our loving God says to you once again. I have loved you with an everlasting love. For I forgive your unthankfulness. And I remember your sins no more. You see, Thanksgiving is a time to remember. And we're here tonight. That's the reason we're here. We're here tonight so that we can remember that there's no need to be anxious. There's no need to be afraid. There's no need to worry. There's no need to fret. Because the Lord has you covered <coughs> forever. Happy Thanksgiving. Amen. And now in the peace of God that passes all understanding, guard to keep your hearts and minds and faith in Christ Jesus into life everlasting. Amen. I invite the congregation then to please kneel for the prayer of the church. Let us then pray to the Lord with thanksgiving for all of His blessings and with trust in His mercy to hear and answer us. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for the richness of Your creation and for Your grace that You would sustain what You have made. We pray for the bounty of resources that sustain our daily lives as You give us our daily bread and for the good fruit of the earth by which we and all creatures are fed and nourished. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the government and order in our land and in the world, for those who lead us in this nation, and for all leaders of all nations, and for the blessing of justice, the protection of life, and the promotion of virtue and honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, this evening we remember those who suffer illness of body and mind, for those who sorrow with the loss of those they love, and for those near death. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray, O Lord, that you would give us thankful hearts, that we may not forget the poor and those in need. We pray for generosity, that we may supply from our abundance those who are in want, and for our tithes and offerings, that we would bring, O Lord, our gratitude to you for all of your good and gracious gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our vocations and occupations, for the gift of labor, the privilege of enjoying the fruits that labor, and for the unemployed and the underemployed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In all things, O Lord, grant us grace, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought, but to honor you above all and to love our neighbors as ourselves. 
On our own, we have nothing that will endure. But you have granted to us all things in Christ in the life that does not end. Hear your people, and for the sake of and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, with whom, in whom, and through whom, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Like the congregation, and we stand for the service of the sacrament. We begin there. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne of the Lamb be praised. Thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But I the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. The Lord Jesus Christ, the night when he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper and when he given thanks, he gave them saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We stand for prayer. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us with the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our announcements. Welcome, everyone, once again this evening. In the name of the Lord, we gather here on this eve before Thanksgiving to come and, and figure out the reason why there is a Thanksgiving. It's not for God's benefit. It's, it's for our, so that we can do the remembering and then the giving thanks to God for all the blessings that He so graciously gives to us, especially with, with the grateful hearts we sang with our hymn of praise, because He gives us His own Son. We give thanks to God for that tremendous gift. A couple quick announcements. If you brought your commitment card, you can leave them in the box over there where we have the uh, offering plate. If you didn't bring it here tonight, you can do so over the uh, next week here, starting next Sunday or midweek advent or the following Sunday, and then those will eventually be placed in that box as they always are, and then placed up here in the altar for the year until next Thanksgiving. If you didn't get a commitment to pack from the stewardship board, or you maybe misplaced it, there's some out there at the table where you picked up your bulletins and you can pick up one of those envelopes as you, as you leave here this evening. Then also, it's hard to believe that Thanksgiving comes Advent and it starts right away here next Wednesday night. So a week from tonight, we'll begin our first midweek Advent meal at 6 o'clock, worship at 7. We'll be looking at the stories of Advent and the expectation found in some of those characters of Advent, looking at Elizabeth, Zachariah, and then Joseph. And we'll look at that as that helps us prepare here for the coming of the King this Christmas season. And then finally, have a, have a very blessed Thanksgiving here tomorrow, not only just tomorrow, but every day, as we give thanks 
with a grateful heart for all that God has done for us. So have a very blessed Thanksgiving. We look forward to seeing you here next Sunday as we begin the Advent season and prepare for the coming here of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that will be the focus here of our worship next Sunday. So we conclude our worship service then here this evening with our closing hymn, 892, Come Ye Thankful People.